3,000 enemy mines had to be cleared from beach approaches before the Marine force could come ashore. It was a delay, but we could afford it. The rocks had made us a welcome present, a beach with no enemy guns on it. The whole division came ashore with nothing worse than a few wet feet. The mission now is to press this advantage, continue the attack toward the Alu. Swiftly, the Marine force moves in on red-held villages and towns. just as swiftly out the other side. Spirits are high. Three days later, and more than a hundred miles closer to the Alu, the 7th Division makes its landing at Iwan. Ships of every description swarm into shallow water to disgorge 7,000 men and their machines. Their only opposition, the deep blue sand of Iwan's beaches. north, winter comes early to Korea. Cold weather uniforms are welcome as the division moves out to rejoin the attack. To the west, Marines are advancing over ground frozen harder every day. News of their approach runs ahead of them as village after village is liberated. North Koreans meet freely and the Christians among them pray openly for the first time since 1945. Shattered communist forces are pulling back into the last corner of this peninsula they have set out to conquer. UN troops follow as fast as the tortuous terrain and increasing cold will allow. In the eastern sector, it is difficult even to keep contact with the retreating enemy. In the central sector, however, prisoners taken during a strong red counterattack give warning of potential danger. Many of them wear the quilted uniform of communist China. Meantime, in the northern sea of Japan, winter is giving our offshore forces a taste of things to come. Even routine supply operations are becoming a nightmare of icy wind and pitching decks. We kept our aircraft warmed and ready to take off the minute the weather lifted. But meantime, the Reds would have a lot less trouble moving troops and supplies on Korean roads. We didn't like that thought much. Ashore, the Chinese forces have pulled back, leaving a clear road to the Yalu. The village of Hai San Jin huddles against the banks of the Yalu across from Manchuria. Here, men of the 7th Division set up their outposts. It seems a sorry spot to spend Thanksgiving Eve. But from bases in the south, cargo planes are already taking off setting courses northward across the frozen miles. They carry crates rigged for airdrop and labeled perishable rush. Turkey and the trimmings, courtesy of the U.S. Air Force. All over Korea, mess kits overflow with steaming potatoes, giblet gravy, cranberry sauce, the works. Along the Alu, everything is quiet. Every man, no matter what his duty for the day, shares in the traditional feast of gratitude. Headquarters feel certain that one more UN offensive will end the fighting in Korea. Actually, a whole new war is ready to begin. Across the Yalu, the decision has been made. Full-scale Chinese intervention is about to bring the second phase of the Korean conflict to an end. Eighth Army's end of the war offensive was launched the day after Thanksgiving in 1950. It started out smoothly, but by nightfall of the second day, the UN was facing a new enemy in Korea, and a new war had begun. The Chinese rolled swiftly southward, 
splitting the Allied line and cutting off Marine and 7th Division troops in the east near the Chosin Reservoir. We took turns sleeping in the daytime. It was too cold at night. I heard later we lost more people from freezing than from enemy action. Even the mortar rounds froze through the cases. The Chinese had an awful lot of people between us and the beach, but the harbor at Hung Nam was our only way out. toward the sea through an enemy force which outnumbered them five to one. Pausing only to evacuate wounded by air from Hagaru, they pushed on, reaching safety on December 10th. They found Hongnam a busy town. Within the harbor's perimeter, heavy weapons worked around the clock thrown from a curtain of fire through which the enemy divisions dared not pass. Behind the guns, a near miracle of planning, organization, and teamwork was taking place. A massive amphibious landing in reverse. In the space of 10 days, more than 100,000 fighting men were evacuated. North Koreans, by the tens of thousands, flocked to the dock area to plead for evacuation. From this one area, more than 90,000 North Koreans deserted their homes rather than return to the life they had experienced under communism. We were the last to leave. When we were gone, the harbor would be too. We set blocks of TNT and laced hoses filled with jelly and explosive all along the waterfront. Ticking time bomb. The evacuation convoy steamed southward toward the free ports of Pusan and Pohang. Their troops would reland, regroup, and move back to engage the enemy. The military withdrawal by land was orderly as the rest of the 8th Army pulled back once again across the 38th parallel. But for hundreds of thousands of civilians trying desperately to outrun the advancing communists, the journey southward was a nightmare of cold, weariness, and confusion. Old people pulled loads meant for oxen or carried their precious few belongings on their backs. Children who had no part in the causes of war received full measure of its hardships just the same. On December 27th, General Ridgway arrived to replace General Walker killed in a tragic jeep accident. He was just in time for the enemy's New Year's Eve offensive. Blowing the Han River bridges behind them. Incheon, like Hung Nam, was evacuated by sea. Here, too, we took pains to leave nothing behind which the enemy could use. the troops which had been taken off the beach at Hung Nam were regrouped and despite bitter weather took advantage of a welcome opportunity to catch up with themselves. By 
By mid-January, the enemy offensive had bogged down. Using fire-hardened troops, Ridgeway launched a series of short, high-powered thrusts called Operation Killer. The enemy held a huge numerical advantage. Ridgeway was out to eliminate it. to meet great strength. They found surprising weakness. Under the pounding raids of Operation Killer, the enemy fell back. Ridgeway pressed the advantage. No rest for the enemy, and not much more for 8th Army. If anybody ever invents a mattress that feels half as good as a patch of frozen ground felt then, you'll make a million dollars. Although destruction of enemy forces remained its prime objective, Operation Killer had evolved into a ground-gaining operation. The way things were going, we couldn't stay outnumbered for long. The word was they were losing ten men to our one. 